Hey everybody, how you doing? So, I needed to melt down this ballistics gel. You see, I got my tin here in order to make a new one. You can see this one's already been shot. You see that bullet path through there? But, didn't know how to do it, so I went to the internet to figure out how and watch a video of someone else doing it so I could avoid making any mistakes. And guess what? There are not any good videos on the internet showing you how to melt down ballistics gel and put it in a tin. So I'm making this video so hopefully you guys will be able to know how to do it in the future. If I screw it up, you'll know how not to do it. But on the clear ballistics website it literally says if you have the metal mold put it in the oven for four hours at 250 to 270 degrees so i'm going to play it on the safe side put the oven up at 250 degrees it's said to clean the mold which this one i'm going to have to clean you can see it's got dirt and junk all over it from when we were shooting it last it says clean it chop it up into little pieces put it in the tin Put it in the oven for four hours from 250 to 270. So I'm gonna clean this up in the sink real quick, chop it up into little pieces, put it in the tin, then put it in the oven at 250 for four hours. Then it says to let it cool for 12 hours. But what a lot of people don't realize about ballistics gel, it is crazy expensive. I bought this one. I'm not sponsored by clear ballistics or anything like that, but I will put their name in the video because that's where I bought it from and they got good stuff. So these blocks cost $150. That's the number one comment on the channel is, hey, you should have shot the, you should have used that bullet on ballistics gel. You should have shot some ballistics gel. How come you never shoot ballistics gel? I don't, I would love to shoot a block of gel in every single video. Do whatever we're doing to say, hey, let's see what happens in the gel, bang. But, like I said, these suckers literally cost $150 a piece. These are not just like jello. Like, you put your finger in that? No, these suckers are tough. Obviously, that's how they could stop bullets, but 150 bucks. The next video that I'm gonna use this gel in is going to be awesome so stay tuned for that but back to what this video is about i'm gonna go clean this up quick chop it up stick it in the oven and show you a little bit along the way so first i'm gonna go wash this up in the sink and there's some bullet pieces in here too we got to get out actually while i'm sitting here let me dig out this bullet fragment and this is just a fillet knife that I'm gonna use to cut this stuff up. Mainly because this knife is cheap and I don't care if I jack it up. Be careful not to cut yourself. Yeah, that is actually, if you're familiar with my videos, that is actually a pedal off of 4570 round from black butterfly that's super wicked where the petals flake off nasty nasty round but yeah i'm gonna go clean this quick all right now that i've got it cleaned up you can see the gel a little bit better i could have taken some of these wrinkles out with a heat gun but i didn't for the last video but this we actually shot with 450 bushmaster 458 SOCOM and then 4570. See that right there is where that pedal snapped off the 4570. You definitely want to be sure to clean it up and get all the junk off of it. This one we were actually shooting outside, so it has a bunch of dirt and stuff all on it. So I absolutely wanted to make sure to clean this and I recommend it if you're shooting it, don't shoot it somewhere where it can get really dirty because that was a pain. I literally had to scrub the dirt out of this. These are sticky tacky and they get dirty real easy. So now that I got it cleaned up, I'm literally just gonna start chopping it up into a bunch of pieces and putting it down inside this metal tin. So, uh, see what we can do here. I don't know how well this stuff is going to cut up, but 
I'm about to find out. Eh. Let's see with a really sharp fillet knife, you can cut it off pretty easy. I'm probably going to try to get it all into chunks about like that. You know, the smaller the pieces are, the better they'll fit together down in the pin, in the tin, and also the quicker it will melt. So, also it helped me find if there's any little pieces of junk in here that I need to be removing. So, I'm just gonna get to cutting this up. What I'm finding here and cutting this up, it's easier and a lot faster, at least for me. Like I said, this stuff is really tough. You can't just chop it up real quick with this really sharp fillet knife has even a little bit of trouble cutting through it but what I'm finding is it's easier and faster if I cut off almost like a slice of bread and then just rip it with my hands into pieces like that so that may or may not be a good tip for you you may have a crazy good sharper knife than I do but it seems to be what's working good for me it's just cutting off like a loaf and then just ripping it into smaller pieces by hand. So I'm gonna finish up this whole gel here, doing it this way, and then we'll be right back. Then we'll be ready to turn the oven on. Also, a big thanks to my buddy, Nick. He's the one that actually sent me this metal mold. Without my buddy, Nick, we wouldn't even be able to make this video or shoot more gel. So big thanks to you, Nick. So, you can see here, here's the metal tin, and we have this completely full, but then also with that one gel block filled up this entire red bowl. So I was thinking in my head, if I ripped them up into small enough pieces, we could get it all into this one bowl. <laughs> Charlie's waving high. But even with these tiny pieces, we overflowed the tin and filled up this huge bowl. That is just one block and it took over two hours to rip all this up, even with the help of the kids. So keep that in mind if you're gonna rip up a gel block, unless you have a better way of ripping it up than I do, it's gonna take you a long time. But I've got the oven heated up to 250. Let's go over there and stick this tin in the oven. And then once it's melted down, we're gonna have to keep adding this stuff in bit by bit, which I was hoping to avoid, but that's what we're gonna have to do. You got some milk, Charlie? Okay, let's go put this in the oven here. All right, you can see we got the oven on 250 degrees. So now I'm just gonna put this block in the oven there. In order to make it fit, I had to take out the top rack and move the bottom rack as low as it would go. Ugh. Him. I'm gonna keep an eye on it to make sure that it's not dripping out or anything, but it's 11 o'clock right now. We should be completely done by three o'clock or so. And like I said, I'm gonna have to keep checking it and adding in the stuff from that other bowl as that stuff melts down in there. That is what it is looking like after exactly one hour. You can see how far down some of it's gone. So I'm gonna throw some more in there here. And I am literally just grabbing some handfuls and this feels really sketchy. Try not to burn my hands here. Maybe a little bit smaller handfuls is a little bit better. But 250 degrees seems to be doing just fine. Definitely don't want to burn yourself. All right, the instructions said for four hours or till all the bubbles are out. And, oh, that's heavy. I think this is as good as it's gonna get. It's been in there for five and a half hours, so. I'm gonna go set this in the garage and cool. It says it has to cool for 12 hours. We'll check it tomorrow. 
see how it's all liquid. All right, now we're about 24 hours after I took that out to cool. I left it in the garage for almost an entire day. So check it out and look what it looks like. So you can see that most of the bubbles came up to the top. And remember, I cooked this for like five and a half hours. The instruction said four hours or until all the bubbles come to the top. Well, if you look down in there, there's still quite a few bubbles down in the middle, but I figured an extra hour and a half was probably as good as it's going to get. And if you look, the cooling, it looks like it's all not really sticking to the sides. So hopefully we'll be able to get it out of here pretty easily. Instructions said to get one hand down in the side, but I think it's probably easier said than done. Well, first let's see if it's just going to dump. I doubt it. Yeah, no, not coming out that way. Short story is this stuff's really hard to get out. There we go. So I got just a super really tight cat claw grip on that edge there and it started to pop out. My wife is handing me kitchen utensils. Mm, I feel like I'm gonna break that. See right there where my fingernails were, trying to pull it out of there. But once you get that back corner, it all starts to come out. Whew. So, let's look at that up closer. It is definitely not super clear you can see that chair back behind there it's still kind of foggy and has quite a few bubbles throughout there so that's kind of disappointing i was hoping it would come out glassy clear pulling it out but the instructions also said to use a heat gun or a blow dryer hair dryer to clear up some of that fogginess so i'm pretty doubtful it's going to do a whole lot of difference but Let's try it anyways, see if it helps out. I just ran that blow dryer on the gel for about 20 minutes. To me, it doesn't look like that made a difference at all. So let me show you the same view. Before we were looking through that at the chair and to me it looks like the same fogginess but let's look at the before and then the after I don't think it really made much of a difference but thanks for watching the video guys hope you enjoyed it hope you found it useful if I mess something up and you know a better way to do it absolutely let me know because I'm gonna be doing a bunch of this stuff but big shout out and big thanks to heavy metal guns and outdoors everybody go check them out and subscribe We'll see you on the next one. Hoodoo!